what did you study as an undergraduate? What did you choose? Why did you choose to major? And did you consider any other majors? Um, in my undergraduate study, I majored majored in information engineering. Um, that was a very long time ago. I grew up in Taiwan, and the way they handle the entrance to the college is everyone is taking the same exam. And then after you receive the score, you fill out, fill out a form for your preference. And some will be very competitive, some will be relatively easy. And that's the way we, <laughs> we go with that. Um, Actually, we don't have much choice at another time, depending on our score for another exam, because they don't look at our GPA at the school. The only, just the, score. the only indication for admission is just the score. It's just like SAT in here? Yes, yes. Um, it's eight, totally eight subjects, eight exams. Mm -hmm. So it's either it's like all or nothing, you have to do good on the exam, or else you don't really uh, I'm sorry, can you speak it louder? So basically, if you just don't do well on an exam, you can't mm -hmm. no. do anything. Mm -hmm. And the acceptance rate uh, in another year was around 20% nationwide. Jeez. Mm. <laughs> it was very competitive. Now it's relatively much easier, but when I was at a year age, it was very competitive. So pretty much we don't have many choices, depending, it's all decided on the score. Okay. Mm. So, the next question is, was there a class you struggled in as an undergraduate? How did you handle it? Um, during my undergraduate study, the hardest course is assembly language. Um, at another time, it's, it's a very low level language. It's a machine language not like a high level languages such as C++ or Java. So it's very hardware related. If we don't understand the hardware component, there is no way we can understand the language. And most of my classmates at another time were struggling with this course. So what we, we handle it is we form a study group. <laughs> Try to learn from each other. Not, not only from the class, but also helping each other. And that's the way we survive. But still, we didn't do that well. We pissed, not a course, but we didn't do well. Well, the next question is, besides the courses you took within your major, what did you enjoy about college? Um, as I just mentioned in the last question, we formed a group study. And then after every exam, we go outside to celebrate some this kind of things. Uh, it was a lot of fun. After we all struggled for a certain time, and then got a relax for a short time. That was kind of fun. Yeah. And at another time, we don't have not a lot of much recreations. <laughs> I'm, I'm 54 years old already. <laughs> What area of research are you currently interested in? When did you discover your interest in these areas? Um, basically, I am interested in all of the AI-related research, artificial intelligence. But particularly, I'm focusing on intelligent tutoring system, which is like having a machine tutor. It is always available there. So as long as a student like you, as long as you are awake, the tutor is awake, and you don't have to make an appointment. Okay. Um, I really like this kind of things. And it's different from the traditional computer-aided instruction. Traditionally, we have so-called CAI, computer-aided instruction. Um, the difference between an intelligent tutoring system and CAI is CAI treat everyone equal. They don't assess your knowledge level. They make everyone to go through the same steps, and which is definitely not a good. Some people will get frustrated. Some people will, will complain that I know this already. So for intelligent tutoring system, 
through the interaction between the real life student and the machine tutor, the machine tutor will keep assessing the knowledge level of the student and then plan a sequence of lessons for, for every different student. It's like a customized. Okay. Uh, I have a question about the machine, machine tutor actually. So, are they just interfering with the program process how to learn or do they change the goal accordingly? Um, we have a specific problem domain, the knowledge domain, to help the student with knowledge acquisition. For example, it could be a particular system to help a student to learn the recursive programming only on that topic. Okay. It, it's not, a, it's not a, uh, good enough to offer the entire course. We might choose one particular chapter that most of the students think it's hard to, to learn it. And then we put, provide this kind of additional help for students in that chapter only. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, next question is, what, uh, what do students not know about you and that you wish you did, they didn't know? <laughs> Um, misunderstanding between students and instructors is not unusual. Yeah. For example, I always trying to make it very clear. Um, some people will walk in to ask a question about homework, which is definitely very welcome. But some of them actually ask me to like check in their homework in advance and point out that this part is wrong, that part is wrong. Go back to fix it and then bring it back. Which is yeah. not the way we do the homework. Yeah. If the student really don't understand any particular concept, I will be more than happy to repeat that. But I don't hear a student in that manner. Otherwise, I will be doing the assignment for the student. I keep enhancing this kind of policy in class, but still, um, at the end, of almost every semester, I will see some comment saying that the instructor doesn't want to help me with homework, which is not my point. Uh, they may get frustrated because I don't want to check their assignment in advance. The assignment should be another kind of assessment, like a test, right? Yeah. If we want to do it another way, I would rather just have the exercise on the board. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, and I don't know why it's it's always so hard for some students to understand the point. Really, every semester I got a, a few comments saying, I asked the instructor to help my homework, but he refused. That's obviously not the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can even repeat the lecture, but I don't do the homework for students. Yeah. Can't just do it for them. It's still their work. They have to actually get the grade. No. Yeah. And it's also unfair to other students. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So our next question is: uh, What skill do you think students need to have to be successful, and what advice do you have to work on this? Thing? Okay, I will say for the short term and the long term, okay? For the short term, for your study here, of course, we are all STEM major. We want to be good at the theory and the practice of the theory. But for the long term, I think more importantly, you need the kind of strategic planning skill for yourself, okay? You, you have to keep asking yourself at least once a year, what is my strength and what is my weakness? What can I do to maximize my strengths? And what should I do to overcome my, my weakness? At least, you should have this kind of capability to, to do some strategic planning for your future. That is even more important than the technical skill you are learning now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so just knowing myself, so yes. Yes. Yes, you want to do something to maximize your power, right? Right now, relatively, you are good at this, but if you don't keep improving yourself, other people will catch you up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. So, the next question is, 
Why should we study to get AI resemble close to a human brain? Um, in the study of AI, we have two schools of people doing the research. One is really aiming at creating something like an electronic human, which will have a mental state like you and me. And obviously, we are not there yet. This kind of study, the goal for pursuing this kind of goal is known as a strong AI. Okay. Um, definitely, it will have a certain level, level of social impact to our life. Can you imagine that if someday a robot falls in love with you, how do you handle that? <laughs> if, if, the, really, if the AI program has the mental state like a human, that's definitely possible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, we have been very successful, not in strong AI, not in other manner, but in so-called weak AI. We try to model the intelligent behavior from real life. Could be from some human expert or some animal. And then we model those kind of behavior and have the computer program to follow the model to perform their job also intelligently. That's the kind of AI we are doing now. We don't need the AI program to think like you and me. Okay. Otherwise, the AI program will tell you, I'm hungry, can you give me 10 minutes break? I need to eat a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying to try to copy human brain, we need to learn more about our behavior? Right now, all of the AI behavior, all of the problem solving technique are based on the modeling of human behavior, and which is good enough to help our life. But if the machine has the mental state like a human, I don't know, are you familiar with one of the movie called the Terminator? We might have that kind of machine working on the street, and that could be dangerous. Or the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I have to go to my class. Uh, okay.